Live from Watson Stadium in Eugene, Oregon, the Pac-12 Networks proudly present college football. Today, the number four Oregon Ducks host the Colorado Buffaloes. Hi, everybody. Welcome in. Adam Archuleta, Kevin Calabro, Yogi Roth will join us down on the field. A rainy 51-degree afternoon here at Autzen Stadium in Eugene. The Oregon Tucks 7-0, 4-0 in conference off to a terrific start on both sides of the football. Offensively, Adam, number two in the country. Points per ball game, 51. Quite a show. This offense has always been defined by a dynamic quarterback running back combination, and this season is no different. Marcus Mariota, the 18-year-old signal caller, is as smooth as Ernie Els' golf swing, the perfect combination that you want from your dual-threat quarterback, a 68% passer. And, oh, by the way, Kevin, if you give him a sliver, he will gash you on the ground. And the other piece of this attack, of course, is Kenyon Barner. The fifth-year senior has emerged from LaMichael James' shadow beautifully. He's an all-purpose running back that can hit you with a Mike Tyson uppercut. Or if the game calls for it, Kevin, <laughs> can wear you down with devastating body blows inside. Explosive offense, lethal defense, and Yogi Roth today, they face a Colorado team that has a bit of a different look offensively. Yeah, and it's been raining up and down all morning long, but this Colorado offense, they pound the rock, and Oregon has not seen that all season long. It's going to be a little different. Don't be shocked when you see a fullback, a couple tight ends, and this is what Colorado will try to do to control the clock all afternoon long, but it won't be easy. It's homecoming here at Austin Stadium. It's the 88th game for a sellout, and this student section is fired up on Halloween. We'll be back with kickoff on the Back 12 Networks. Football is brought to you by Dr. Pepper 10. 10 bold calories, 23 flavors. And by State Farm. For auto, home, life, and banking, get to a better state. Fifty-one degrees, cool here at Austin Stadium. Our showdown Saturday on the Pac-12 Networks. Take a look at our Napa keys to the game. Colorado, you have to finish the deal. Last week against the Trojans, you moved the ball well. Terrible in the red zone, two for five, only two field goals. Chip Kelly, Oregon Ducks, don't change your feathers. You have the recipe. You've been doing it all season. Continue to do what you do all day today. Oregon wins the toss. Oregon will receive the ball. Oregon going left to right. You are looking at DeAnthony Thomas, a.k.a. the Black Mamba. DeAnthony Thomas and Keenan Lowe are back to receive the kick. And we are underway here in Eugene and taking it up with space is low across the 40 yard line in great field position to get underway for the Oregon Ducks. Take a look at their lineup this afternoon. Mata Gregg, the junior walk on, steps in to start for the second consecutive afternoon. The right guard for the Oregon Ducks up front. And on our insurance lineups, Kotlai Erlov, receiver of four touchdown passes, along with Keenan Lowe, Kenyon Barner. And Marcus Mariota, the quarterback of the Ducks, can beat you with the arm and with his feet. Drops back, takes a look, 50, and rolls down for a first down, short of the 46-yard line of the Colorado Buffaloes. And he's having a very good year, Adam. 16 touchdown passes, five interceptions, over 1,300 yards, and 68% completion average for the youngster, the freshman from Honolulu, Hawaii. Ducks go back to work. They need a yard for the first down. Working parallel line of scrimmage. Kenyon Barner in a nice tackle. And he is dropped down there by the Colorado Buffaloes' pursuit. Parker Orms steps up to get him. Orms, the junior from Wheat Ridge, Colorado. 
And these safeties, Kevin, Parker Orms, Ray Polk, they're going to have to have big games. This offense puts a tremendous amount of pressure at the safety position to make one-on-one -on -one tackles. Look at this formation for Oregon. Two by two in tandem on left and right. It's a running play, and it's Kenyon Barter right side 20. Kenyon Barter to the 10 and run out of bounds, shy of the five-yard line. Kenyon Barter, who's having a remarkable year this year, 870 yards on the ground and 12 touchdowns coming into this afternoon's game. He does such a good job inside. There you see John Major, the, ta uh, the linebacker right there, had a chance to make an arm tackle, but Kenyon Barner, he has the speed, but you have to put your face in him, wrap him up, grab cloth to have a chance of bringing him down. Pick up a 42 for the three-year Letterman out of Riverside, California. Here's the handoff to Barner. Has some room right side, running into the end zone. Touchdown, Oregon. May have marked it shy of the goal line. Let's see. And watch, they're going to mark this just shy of the goal line. They'll run it, and it's a formality as Barner will take it right side for his 13th touchdown on the ground this year. And Oregon, just like that, takes the 7-0 lead. Uh, the quick strike, that's what this offense has been about this season. 45 touchdowns, now make it 46, all under two minutes. 18 touchdowns, under 60 seconds this season, and six touchdowns, under 52 seconds this season, all on the ground. This offense, very impressive. Rob Beard is the senior from Fullerton, California, on to add the extra point. And it's up and good. And the Oregon Ducks lead 7-0. Five plays, 57 yards in under two minutes of work. And Kenyon Barner. Chip Kelly, the coach of the Ducks. Three straight Pac-12 titles. Kelly's club 7-0, 4-0 in conference. And Kevin, this offense, you can try and prepare for it in practice. You can try and simulate it, but this football team has been doing it for so many years together. They practice it every single day together. There's nobody in the country that runs the speed and the tempo like Chip Kelly's Oregon Ducks. And for Colorado, who has a ton of freshmen, playing on the defensive side of the ball. It is an eye-popping experience when you finally get there on the field and it's happening to you live. Very difficult to try and prepare and deal with the pace and the speed of this offense. John Emery, Colorado class of 88. Now his second year as the head football coach at Colorado. Ball juggled. Ball loose. Ball picked up. And the Oregon Ducks score just like that special teams touchdown. Ducks lead 13 to nothing on a bobbled kickoff return. Avery Patterson picks it up and scoots into the end zone. Touchdown, Ducks. Well, turnovers, that's been the bad turnover at the wrong time and it has been a huge problem. It happened against the Ducks last week against USC now Oregon goes down the field in three plays scores their first touchdown you have a chance to fill the return Avery Patterson now his third touchdown of the year and looks like maybe they're going to call him down but again how many times have we seen this from Colorado this season the mistake so the kicking team cannot advance the fumble and so Oregon will take possession of the football. They'll go to work at the 17 yard line. Mariota calmly throws left side, back shoulder pass, slanting sideline left and complete for the Oregon Ducks. The Anthony Thomas, the recipient of the pass inside the 10 yard line of the Colorado Buffaloes. The Buffaloes starting lineup, Chidera Uzo. Deribe with 15 sacks during his career. John Major anchors the linebackers. Freshman Yuri Wright playing corner today for the Colorado Buffaloes. Marietta backtracks, throws to Kenyon Barner, and he has dropped down at about the nine yard line. 26% of the defensive snaps this year taken by the Colorado Buffaloes have been taken by freshmen. 
on that side of the line of scrimmage. Yeah, it's been a huge issue, and especially in the secondary. They've had three freshmen play this season. Yuri Wright getting the start here today. Kenneth Crawley last week, but no question, Kevin, it's been a big deal for this defense. The attend of Menu Greg of Oregon will step aside. It's a the Rose Bowl. The 2012 Pac-12 Football Championship game, Friday, November 30th. Welcome back to Eugene, Oregon, along with Adam Archuleta, Yogi Roth, Kevin Calabro on hand, number four in the BCS. The Oregon Ducks off to a terrific start, leading 7-0. Kenyon Barner caps a five-yard drive in less than two minutes with a one-yard plunge into the end zone. Colorado fumbles the kickoff. Oregon takes it, and now Oregon working to the pile on left side. DeAnthony Thomas, touchdown Ducks. Too much quickness on the edge. The sophomore from Crenshaw High, in Los Angeles, California, DeAnthony Thomas. And when you play against this offense, it's about the edges. They attack the edges, the perimeter, better than any team that I've seen this season. And maybe in the last three seasons, something the Colorado Buffaloes on defense have had a hard time with this year. There, DeAnthony Thomas, too much speed, gets around the edge and gets in the end zone. You know, we talked about Thomas. He's got glittering numbers but in the Pac-12 in the first four games just the one touchdown so far against conference opponents. Yeah, he's been very quiet in run game. His best game against the Pac-12 has been against Washington where he had 75 yards and a touchdown. Might be another big day for DeAnthony Thomas in the Oregon Ducks here today. one win at Arizona State University Adam they put 21 on the board in the second quarter unanswered to lead 43 at 7 at half on the road in a game that many people thought would be a slugfest it was at Kenyon Barner 143 yards three touchdowns in that one Ducks on a roll as they get now into the strength of this schedule 7-0 4-0 in conference against this Colorado team that comes in 1-6 on the season and after muffing the first kickoff, they'll get another chance at it. Dante Abram comes on. The sure-handed Abram veers out left side and across to the 21-yard line. And that's where the Buffaloes will set up shop. Sean Hockley, our referee this afternoon here in Oxford Stadium. Good to see Sean. What's you, what you have here, Sean? Personal foul. Face mask by the kicking team number 12. 15 yards will be added to the end of the play. First down. So they'll march this off and it'll move Colorado up to the 36 yard line. First down Buffaloes who are coming off a loss down in Southern California. Matt Barkley six touchdown passes last weekend. This is Jordan Webb the quarterback. Little screen left side and up to about the line of scrimmage comes Christian Powell, the freshman from Upland, California. Here are our insurance lineups. Gus Handler out of the great state of Illinois anchors the offensive line at center. Nick Casa has four touchdowns receptions from his tight end position. Nelson Spruce, the freshman, leads him in total catches this year. And the quarterback is Jordan Webb. From Union, Missouri, transfer out of Kansas. Eight touchdowns, seven interceptions on the year. Three wide receivers now for the Buffaloes as they go to work on second down, and Webb swings a pass to about the 46 yard line. You see the Ducks swarm to the football. Vincent Hobbs with the catch. Webb has been sacked 30 times. This year, 34 sacks total allowed by the Colorado Buffaloes. Sacked five times recently in a loss to Arizona State University. Webb somehow manages to stay upright. A first down for the Buffaloes. Hesitation pitch right side with some room. 
flags on the play. Christian Powell plows ahead out across the 45-yard line of the Ducks. Yeah, they're either going to get a hold on Daniel Munyer or Gus Handler, the center or the right guard. And I believe somebody in there got a hold, an arm on the defensive tackle, Wade Kili'i Kipi. Starting left tackle, David Bakhtiari, nicked up. And before the game, we were told that he would not be playing today. There were three fouls by the offense on the play. Holding. Number 44, that penalty is declined. Personal foul, illegal block below the waist by the offense, number 83. That penalty is also declined. Personal foul, chop block by the offense. Two players simultaneously blocked high and low. 15 yards, first down. There was nothing good about that play for John Emery. Nothing whatsoever. Eastern starting lineups for the Oregon Ducks. Taylor Hart and Deion Jordan each with five sacks coming off the edge at you. Kiko Alonso anchors the middle. Michael Clay slides outside because of some injuries among the linebacking core. And Avery Patterson's done a terrific job this year. Stepping in for the All-America, John Boyette, whose career is over here at Oregon due to injuries, did not even begin the year. So Colorado goes to work. First down at the 31-yard line, and a long way to go. Webb, left side, well covered. Two men converge to the football. Gerald Thomas caught it, but immediately is knocked down by Avery Patterson. And Patterson does... Terrific work this year, as we say, stepping into the, the shoes of John Boyette, who not only was a sticker, but he was a, he was a guy back there that was making a lot of communication with their defense and their sets. It was a big loss to have John Boyette not be a part of this defense this season, but Avery Patterson has been just a flat-out playmaker. He's had two pick sixes, a 34-yard interception return against Washington State, a 43-yard interception return against Washington. He leads the team with three interceptions. So he is more than filled in for John Boyette. Oregon with four pick sixes this year. Webb is back, sets, and fires in traffic. Beautiful pass across the 45-yard line to the dependable tight end, the senior from Thornton, Colorado, Nick Casa, who's had a very good year this year. And that's going to be key. They have to find a way to get number 44, Nick Casa, involved in this offense early. They did not do a good job last week against USC getting him involved. He has been the one bright spot this season in a struggling offense. The only real big play capability that they have outside of Tony Jones. Eric Bieniemy, the great running back in Colorado. The offensive coordinator now for the Buffaloes on third and 11. Colorado moved the ball well against USC last week and they led in time of possession. Ran off 85 plays but just could not get it done in the red zone. Webb throws left side badly under thrown. And Tony Jones may have trapped the balls. It brings up a fourth down for the Buffaloes. It was pouring down rain when we got here about 9 o'clock this morning. It looks like it has tapered off now down on the field. 51 degrees here in Eugene. Well, it is rain. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad we're in a covered environment. And you were smart enough to wear a jacket. It I is, wasn't. It is raw out here at Autzen Stadium. But these are hale and hearty folks here in the great Northwest. They love their football, and they were tailgating today well before the game. Colorado will kick it away. And it bounces back into the hands of DeAnthony Thomas, and he is swarmed and run over and piled on down at about the six-yard line. That's where Oregon will begin things, leading here 14-0 early. For the past 10 Ducks leading 14 nothing on the Colorado Buffaloes. Showdown Saturday rolls on as number 17 Stanford hosts the Washington State Cougars immediately following this game. And then tonight it's Cal versus Utah or number seven Oregon State versus Washington right here on the Pac-12 Networks. And for programming information in your area, visit pac-12.com. Ducks get underway at their own eight-yard line. Near side pass complete with four wide receivers set. Run out of bounds is Josh Huff, the junior from Houston, Texas. 
Nope. Ducks flying fast already. Under two minutes, their first touchdown, Kenyon Barner. And then after the muff kickoff by the Colorado Buffaloes, the Anthony Thomas scoots into the end zone, capping a three-play drive. 14-0. This blur offensive attack of Oregon into high gear this year. This time they keep it on the ground, and Kenyon Barner picks up a couple of tough yards, enough for a first down. You mentioned earlier, Adam, the toughness of Kenyon Barner, quick to the edge, but also guys very durable between the tackles. That's one of the things that really stood out. And, and you know, in that Washington State game where Washington State played pretty well in that first half, Kenyon Barner came out of the locker room after halftime and simply exploded against the Cougars. The Anthony Thomas is run out of bounds, but not before a long, long run down there, just shy of midfield. Thomas has really yet to bust one loose. 49 yards, his longest eruption of the year. That was good for 27. The 49 yards is great, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but this guy's capable of explosion anytime he gets the ball. Well, you got that right. Just ask John Major, who was trying to tackle him from inside out right there. Not many that can keep up with number six. That's a modest gain of 26. Mariota back to throw, man wide. Open. Coming out on the backfield, Kenyon Barner. What a weapon he is, and finally dragged down short of the goal line. Don't sleep on Kenyon Barner coming out of the backfield. What I love about this, watch Mariota. He looks off to the right side of the field, so no safety has a chance to see Kenyon Barner coming out of the backfield to the left side. You don't see many quarterbacks, especially at the collegiate level, look off safeties, but they're showing another aspect to his game. Ray Polk finally got over there to save the touchdown. Polk, the senior from Scottsdale, Arizona, playing on a bad wheel. Here's Mariota rolling out. He'll keep it. Dives to the end zone. Ball across the end zone. Touchdown, Oregon. Before, on contact with the ground, the ball bounced back to the one-yard line. So Mariota gets his own number and he goes running into the end zone just like that the Ducks on top 20 nothing on the fake on Terrell Smith number 41 Terrell Smith is trying to play right there in no man's land he doesn't know what to do do I take the quarterback or do I come out to the pitch Mariota with a nice little pump fake outside opens up the middle and he gets into the end zone Five yard burst for the touchdown. And on comes Rob Beard to add the extra point. The ruling on the field is that the ball crossed the plane before it came loose. That ruling is under further review. So they'll gather around and review this play. Where did the knee touchdown on the turf? Well, it looks like. I think he might have gotten in, Kevin. He got in. Corkscrewed the body, turned himself in the midair, and extended into the end zone before the knee touched. Yeah, he sure did, from my view. Yeah. The Ducks are an amazing 35 and 4 here at Odson Stadium under Chip Kelly. And at home, they average. Just under 47 points during that Ruling period on the of time. field is confirmed. No part of the runner's body hit the ground, and the ball crossed the goal line before it came loose. Touchdown. So at this time of season, this is particularly a house of horrors for opponents. You come into Hudson Stadium, and <laughs> this Oregon team is going to throw the offensive attack at you. And it's always been that way. This place was tough to play back when I played. That was the late 90s in early 2000. So Autzen Stadium has always had a mystique. The fans always showed up, uh, have always shown up. They've always been extremely loud, a very difficult place to play. One of the best atmospheres that I've ever been a part of as a player. Rob Beard adds the extra point, and it's 21-0 Oregon with 6.56 to go here in the first quarter. Just before the ball game, Ed Reinhardt Jr., former Colorado Buffalo, now 47 years of age, was honored here at midfield. He was playing football as a 19-year-old here when Colorado visited Autzen Stadium and was tackled on what appeared to be an innocent enough play, but a blood clot formed on his brain and his right side was paralyzed. He was in a coma for a month here in Eugene, and of course the Eugene community, as gracious as they are, embraced both Ed Jr. and the family. Ed Sr. was here with Ed Jr. today. 
Uh, they together have spoken to over 400 service groups. The Reinhardts have. And the message is very simple, and that is they look for the good in life every day. And, of course, they will never forget what the Eugene community did for them in their support. John Embry was actually a teammate that was on the field that day, September 15, 1984, when Reinhardt was tackled. And Embry became part of the volunteer army that actually assisted in Reinhardt's recovery. Here's Colorado now with the kickoff. And they'll begin things down and around the 30-yard line. One other note on the Reinhardt story, there are five brothers in that family, and his brother Matthew actually played here at Oregon in 93-94. He has come back to Autzen Stadium, but this is the first time the Buffaloes have come to Autzen since that injury incurred by Reinhardt in 1984. So our best to the Reinhardt family. Ed Sr. was a bit conflicted, by the way. He's wearing an Oregon shirt. <laughs> So Colorado goes to work at the 30 yard line and Jordan Webb the handoff. Oh here's a nice little gainer. This could be for first down is the big man very stout six feet 235 freshman Christian Powell plows ahead for first down for the Buffaloes. Let's go down to the field. Yogi Roth will visit with him for the first time this afternoon. Yeah this Colorado coaching staff they were pleased with what they did a week ago into USC. They moved the ball and even early in this ball game they're getting decent chunks it's just they're not finding that consistency. An extremely young team but they're trying to find some bright spots like the previous play we just saw. John Emery a lot of freshmen he said it's it's a great experience back to back. We're at USC last week at the Coliseum as we were there as well to witness that now we're at Autzen Stadium two tough places to play against quality quality teams and our guys see how great programs handle themselves and this feeling was that this is a terrific learning experience for the young players another pickup of a first down for Colorado but this may come back a flag on the play holding by the offense number 55 10 yards replay first down Gus Handler, the junior center, the guilty party, with their hands full on that front line, the Oregon Ducks. Adam, we mentioned Taylor Hart, 6'6", 292, five sacks tied for the club lead with Deion Jordan, the first team all Pac-12 a year ago, 6'7", 243. That's a lot of headache coming off of both ends. Yeah, they're big, they're long, and they're not just space eaters. They are tremendously athletic and have been wreaking a lot of havoc against offensive lines and offensive backfields this season. First and 23 wide receivers now for the Colorado Buffaloes trailing 21 nothing here in the first period. It'll delay handoff. And once again it's Christian Powell tripped up with a gain of a few on the play. Avery Patterson in on that action. Well, here you go. Two drives in the row, and we've talked to John Embry. We did their game last week against USC, and they're simply, they're not talented enough to overcome the negative play. Their very first drive, they had that triple penalty, put them in negative position. Here on first down, they get a positive running play. Then they go holding. Now it's first and 20. They can't seem to find a way to capture momentum and keep it. Gerald Thomas rotates into the lineup. Possession receiver, a freshman from New Orleans. Webb loses the snap and goes back and rallies at the 26 yard line. So it brings up a third down now for the Colorado Buffaloes who were guilty of six turnovers last weekend against USC. Five for scores against that Trojan football team. John Embry was heartened because his team was moving the football 33 minutes time of possession but once they got into the red zone. And as we know, against quality teams in the red zone, it's a different game. Right? Well, the best teams, they score in the red zone, and the best defenses keep teams out of the red zone. Here today, the story isn't not moving the ball, it's the penalties. Third and 25, Webb unloads left side, turning and hitting upfield is Tony Jones. The man, did he get clobbered from the backside? Coming up to get him was Derek Malone. The junior middle linebacker, 6'2", 220, sophomore from Colton, California. And he's getting the action today because Kiko Alonso is ailing from a wrist injury. So Michael Clay now moves to the middle of the defense. Malone takes over at that Will linebacker spot. But he's a speed guy, has a slight build. He's played a lot of football. Quick, tw quick twitch. There you saw the pursuit from the inside. Dara O'Neill back to punt now for the Colorado Buffaloes. And awaiting it is DeAnthony Thomas 
fair catch down at about the 23 yard line and that's where the Ducks get underway leading 21 nothing take a look at our back of the West Pac-12 players of the week we witnessed Matt Barkley last weekend <laughs> with six touchdown passes four to Robert Woods and how about the quarterback rating of 319 in that game and they wow. only played one half of football and Chase Thomas has been outstanding all season. How about that defense? Held Cal, who's the number three rushing offense in the Pac-12, to just three yards last week. Defensively, that is a stout front at Stanford. Freshman redshirt, Marcus Mariota goes to work. Little handoff, bouncing out right side. Kenyon Barger, 40, across midfield in a foot race to the 30, down to the 20. Veers gets away from the last line of resistance into the end zone. Touchdown, Kenyon Barger, a dash of 77 yards on a wet track. <laughs> Look at it go. Oh, boy, watch the speed. You got to be able to get off of blocks. Again, Paul Vigo gets swallowed up by the center. Peronis Grasso, but Kenyon Barner. He Holding has the speed. By the offense number 60. Grab and restrict at the point of attack. 10 yards. Replay first down. Well, we've got to restrain our glee at seeing greatness out there because Ryan Clanton was holding behind the play. Well, and I, th I actually think that that Clanton, it wasn't Grasso with the block on Vigo. I think this is on number 32. Boy, on the back side of the play, too, really didn't have any effect. No. Kenyon Barner just wasted a little bit of energy right there. <laughs> But this is what the Oregon team does. They will wear you out. It's a war of attrition when you play the Oregon Ducks. They play with that quick pace. They want to really test your conditioning. They'll wear you out by the end of the ballgame. And they don't give you a chance to regroup. They don't give you a chance to collect your thoughts, get your pre-snap reads. It's constant pressure on the defense. Mariota hands off left side. They come right back with the Anthony Thomas rolling left side. A good stop by the Colorado as they get stout up front. Derek Webb. Slides over from the outside linebacking position to gather him in. And from a defensive standpoint, the linebackers, with the way that Oregon runs their inside zone, outside zone, they have to press the line of scrimmage. They're staying too laterally, and that allows the offensive line to get to the second level and get their bodies on them. Second and 15, Mariota. That ball knocked down. Good defensive play. Uh, coming in off the edge was John Major, the fifth year senior out of Parker, Colorado, with his hands up. Just a heads up play, John Major is really kind of a jack of all trades. He's played all the different linebacker positions. The guy that has the most experience, they put a lot on his plate right there. He comes off the edge, something that they don't use him a lot of, but he does a good job getting his hands up and forcing Oregon now in a third long situation. Five wide receiver left, they clear out the backfield. Mariota has that arm cocked looking for the bundle, juggle the ball. Eludes the rush, fires near side, and this is going to be close to a first down. There's a flag flying far side of the field, and the flag flying down where the ball is run out of bounds to the near side. They're going to get Derek Webb with a personal foul. He goes low past the sideline. Will Murphy made the catch, coming back to Mariotto, who is being chased. There were fouls by both teams on the play. During the play, ineligible receiver downfield number 55. That five yard foul will be enforced. After the play was over, personal foul, late hit out of bounds by the defense number 11. That 15 yard foul will also be enforced. Automatic first down. That number was one. There you see Derek Webb trying to hustle inside out, but uh, you just you just have to be smarter again. You have a chance you stop Oregon yep. You had him in a third long situation that was going to be short of the first down now if they go for it That's another story, but you know John Embry right now. He's got to be upset penalties right now have just destroyed any shot that Colorado has of doing something positive so far in this game And as you take on a young team like this, that's the first thing you obviously have to teach and instill is discipline on the field and off. Left side it comes to DeAnthony Thomas. Bounces outside 40. 
Kicks it into fifth gear, and it's caught from behind inside the 30-yard line. And a nice second effort applied by the Colorado Buffalo defense there to stay with it. Take a look. Well, number 55, the center, Hironis Grasso, gets outside on the edge, gets a great block on Derek Webb, the linebacker. That's what gives DeAnthony Thomas the ability to get to the outside untouched, and, of course, his speed does the rest. And you can see Paul Vigo just catch him. Vigo's got some speed. Out to the near side, bouncing near the 20-yard line is Kenyon Barner. That pickup, by the way, of DeAnthony Thomas, good for 44 yards. Well, Kevin, going back to your point on Paul Vigo, angles are the great equalizer, yep. and, and DeAnthony Thomas is one guy that can outrun angles. That's how you know if you have true speed. Normally, he outruns the angle of the defender, but a nice job of Vigo taking the right angle to get him down. Two by two receiver set there in tandem. The handoff is to Barner. Veers left to right. And is knocked down at the 16 yard line. Chip Kelly wants a little more speed, a little more tempo quickly to get to the line of scrimmage. Mariota hands off to Kenyon Barner. No, he's going to keep it and fling it near side. And a touchdown. Braylon Addison. Makes the catch from Mariota on a play action pass to the flat. And Braylon Addison with his third touchdown reception of the year, a 16 yard TD. And it's all Oregon, 27 0. And it's not just pressure on the players, it's pressure on the defensive coordinator right there, Colorado, late getting lined up. Chip Kelly saw that Colorado was struggling, told the quarterback to speed up the tempo. They catch the Buffaloes off guard. Mariota makes the right read. Another touchdown for Oregon. And like all good football teams, fourth ranked in the country, BCS, Oregon has taken the drama out of this one early and lead it 28 0 with a minute 44 to go here in this first quarter. Showdown Saturday rolls on as number 17 Stanford hosts the Washington State Cougars immediately following this game. And then tonight, it's Cal. And Utah, or number seven, Oregon State, against Washington, right here on Pac-12 Networks. For programming information in your area, visit pac-12.com. Adam Archuleta, Yogi Roth, Kevin Calabro on hand. Big day of college football in the Pac-12. Oregon, number four in the BCS. Number seven in the BCS, Oregon State. Number nine, USC, and number 17, Stanford. And big, big games coming on this Saturday afternoon and evening. How about Oregon State traveling north to Seattle to take on the Washington Huskies? Huskies seem to be at a crossroads, and Oregon State is on fire. Sean Mannion back in the saddle starting at quarterback for Mike Riley's Beavers. The Civil War this year will be played in Corvallis. Dante Abram takes the kickoff 20. And gets it across the 25-yard line and will secure it for the Colorado Buffaloes. Down to the field, Yogi Roth. You know, this is a great example of how hard it is for defenses to prepare for Oregon's offense. And we talked to the coaching staff of Colorado this week, and they said they had two scout teams at breakneck speak, literally going every single snap, doubling the reps they did in practice. But you really, Adam, cannot simulate the tempo that Oregon runs. And it was a great example in the touchdown where or or Colorado's defense could not get a line. Well, you can't, and that's the thing. It is a different level, a different speed, and they don't let up. It's the entire game, not just in the first quarter. Webb takes the handoff from, actually it's Powell from Webb, and bangs his way across. Big game for this good-looking freshman. Six feet, 235, Christian Powell. He's got some ability. He's a big, strong back who can break. Tackles pick up there 25 yards and more importantly no flag and he gets a great block from Gus Handler the center and the left guard Alexander Lewis who was able to get the chip and get up to the second level That's what Colorado needs right there. No penalties positive yardage at midfield Again Christian Powell Christian takes it up Powell to the line of scrimmage and is knocked down Gain of a couple on the play Colorado with a uh, band down on the field appears to be Gus Handler. 
6'3 center. John Embry has got his work cut out for him with this young football team coming off a 50 to 6 loss at USC. Gus Andler, the injured player. Said there were definitely some positives in that game against USC. They try to build from day to day in practice and from weekend to weekend during these game situations and accentuate the positive. Taking on, though, uh, a real, real top flight unit in the Oregon Ducks today. Alabama, number one in the country, Florida, Kansas State, and Oregon. And of course, Notre Dame, fifth ranked in the BCS standings. And how about Oregon dropping a notch after winning last yeah. week? Everybody talking about that story, of course. Well, Chip Kelly told us yesterday, in no way, shape, or form, do we as a staff or we as a collection of players here talk about next weekend. It's very much here at Oregon, a day-to-day -day process. We try to have as competitive a practice situation as we can. And you Gus see Handler, the big man, Gus Handler, walking off the field now for Colorado. It's a good sign. Daniel Munyer, the sophomore, will step in behind him. But Kelly said... Uh, in fact, we didn't even bring it up because we knew there wouldn't be a response. <laughs> the matchup, of course, next weekend at USC that all of us fans and folks in the media are waiting to see. You kind of you, you kind of know after dealing or being around coach what to ask and what not to ask. <laughs> Obviously, that would not have gotten a good response. Would have been no response. Second and eight. And Oregon sharp getting right to it. That Michael Clay just playing linebacker exactly how you draw it up. They try and run a stretch play with Dante Abram, the freshman, and Michael Clay perfectly scrapes over the top, makes contact right inside the hole, wraps him up. Textbook linebacker play by Michael Clay. But Yogi mentioned that a moment ago. The fact that Kelly told us that they'll have over 400 snaps or reps during the course of a week's practice. And he said they had a great practice on Friday, one of the best they've had this year. It's not good news for the Buffaloes. Here's Webb throwing out left side. Had a man, but too far out in front of Nelson Spruce, the intended receiver. First quarter in the books here at Hudson Stadium in Eugene. The Ducks 28 and the Buffaloes nothing. at Allstate Company. Welcome back to Hudson Stadium. We move now to the second quarter. The Oregon Ducks leading the Colorado Buffaloes. 28-0. Kenyon Barner. The Anthony Thomas. Marcus Mariota on the ground. Touchdowns for the Ducks. And Braylon Addison through the air from, from Mariota. Gross nickel the punter. Let's this one go up into the air. And it bounces down. At the goal line where Colorado was all over. Outstanding special teams play by the Colorado Buffaloes. Getting down there to get it. Terrell Smith. Smith down again down there at about the three yard line. Yeah, it's exactly what they need. Try and make Oregon go as far as they possibly can to score another touchdown. Let's see if the defense right here and down tight by Oregon's goal line can step up a little bit. Marcus Mariota will bring him out. Mariota had a tremendous spring game that put him over the top in a, a real battle with Brian Bennett, the 6'3 sophomore who started a few games last year because of injuries. With Mariota back to throw. That ball actually deflected. The intended receiver was Keenan Lowe. And it was a good thing it was deflected because Ray Polk, the safety, slipped. And if that ball was on the mark, Lowe would have been running for a long time. Well, John Major again.
Kenyon Barner runs right side, initially stop, but keeps plowing ahead. Behind a determined big man up front, looked like Everett Benyard was leading the way, 15 yards on the carry. Here's Benyard, he was charged up, man. Get on my <laughs> tail, little fella, here we go. Just another example of how tough Kenyon Barner is inside. Three wide receivers left. Mariota fakes the handoff and is knocked down and tackled. Good one-on-one -on -one play by Derek Webb. That is outstanding one-on-one -on -one play, and that's the play that you have to make when they run the keep series. When Mariota decides to keep it, they have to have a, a linebacker who is able to make that play one-on-one. -on -one. And more times than not, we've seen this season, teams have not been able to make that play. What Chip Kelly say, you know, you can scheme all you want, but what the game comes down to is one-on-one -on -one matchups. Can my athlete beat your best athlete? And here's one of the best athletes in the country, DeAnthony Thomas. He's tripped up at the 36-yard line. Thomas has come close to just blasting off. And Derek Webb again comes over to make the stop. Thomas today, Adam, five carries, 97 yards, and a touchdown on the ground. And the offensive line, they don't get enough credit for how this running, running attack is functioning. They are doing such a good job getting to the linebackers and allowing these running backs to run in space. Mariota fires a bullet down across midfield. Josh Huff carving out space down there, posted at the 50-yard line, is dropped down. Huff's having a good year this year, a couple of touchdowns last year, and this year, an 85-yard TD burst against Arizona in 2010. Good, consistent young player out of Houston, Texas, the junior. Mariota, again, finds Huff right side, spins away from a tackle, gets away from another, and leans forward out of bounds. Paul Vigo comes over to make the stop from his linebacker position. And a first down for the Oregon Ducks. Well, and another aspect that playing at this tempo brings, it doesn't allow your defense to disguise, so you have to line up in your base look. That gives the quarterback the easy read here. He goes the exact same play, sees the corner off, and he hits the easy hitch pattern on the outside. And again, it was Vigo that ran Huff out of bounds. Huff, the former quarterback down there in Houston, Texas. You know, Huff, anywhere else, it, it, I would say, 120 other programs in the country would be the featured receiver. Yeah, he's built like it, more of a safety. Big physical presence outside at the wide receiver position. Toss sweep left side with it. Kenyon Barner eases to the 10, cuts back five, untouched end zone, touchdown. Oregon Ducks. Just like that, 24 yards. Kenyon Barner coming off a three touchdown evening against Arizona State last weekend. Well, at the point of attack, Farrell Brown playing the tight end position completely seals off the left side over there, and then Jake Fisher is able to wrap around, get up into the linebackers. And again, too much space out there to cover for Colorado, and you give this space to these backs and the quarterbacks and the wide receivers, and Oregon marches down the field again. How about eight plays, 97 yards, two minutes, 13 seconds. That is blur offense. Cool air, nice and moist. You couldn't, you couldn't draw it up any better. 51 degrees and raining sideways. When we began things at noon here at UG. Colorado goes to work. Dante Ebram seeks refuge at the edge and is knocked out of bounds. Take a look at our Coors Light freeze cam. Well, you got Marcus Mariota looking smooth as could be with a fake little pitch. Gets up field, stretches across the goal line. And that's going to put the Oregon Ducks up 21 to nothing early in the first quarter. Kenyon Barner, two touchdowns over 100 yards this afternoon. DeAnthony Thomas, one on the ground. Mariota, one on the ground. And Braylon Addison, the recipient of a touchdown pass from Marcus Mariota as well. Jordan Webb trying to get something going. A modicum of offense generated here. Tosses out to the big back. Christian Powell, he's actually hit behind the line of scrimmage and dragged down maybe for a loss of one. DeForest 
Buckner, Tyson Coleman combined. Coleman, good looking red shirt freshman out of nearby Lake Oswego, Oregon. And DeForest Buckner, a freshman, and he is a large lad, 6'7, 265 from Honolulu, Hawaii. <laughs> He talked to Eric Bianami, the offensive coordinator for Colorado. He said, the Oregon Ducks on defense, they're built like the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> they have guys that look like you're supposed to look at every single position. Spruce the man in motion for Colorado. A little dig route with the ball thrown over his head and incomplete. Nelson Spruce, the freshman red shirt. Eric Bianami going to work. Pushing as many buttons as he possibly can against this Oregon defense that has forced 108 turnovers this year. They are foremost number one in the Pac-12 Conference. USC number two at 75. That gives you some idea of just how good this defense is. And from a national standpoint, Adam, Louisiana Tech 113, Alabama 111 takeaway. So Nick Aliotti's defense here at Oregon salty. As we mentioned, there is lethal defensively as they are offensive. Webb back to throw. Has a pocket flushed out. Backside pressure. Rolling and throwing. Flutters one down. That was in the field of play but over the head of the intended receiver Gerald Thomas and so for the Buffaloes it brings up a fourth down deal. And in Colorado you know we talked about Eric Bieniemy, of course a few plays ago but they've really tried to change the offense a little bit try and add some more elements they came into the season wanted to kind of be the Stanford that mold be the physical downhill running attack with the play action pass they don't really have the personnel to run that scheme so they start to implement a few more spread elements and they really feel like doing that last week is what allowed them to move the ball a little bit more against a pretty talented USC defense Dara O'Neill the sophomore from Louisville Colorado kicks off Thomas is gonna let it bounce Thomas will take it Thomas turns 20, eludes a tackler, bouncing out left side. Can he get to the edge? Has tacklers ahead, shakes right, moves left near edge, breaks 30, tiptoes 40, across midfield, still turning 30 to the 20. Here he comes, Black Mamba all the way home with a touchdown, Oregon. Well, Kevin, this isn't supposed to happen. Ray Polk has a chance, one of the best defenders on Colorado. He's bottled up. He's contained. He makes people miss. He's not supposed to feel the ball. And then, of course, he opens it up, hits the whiskey throttle, and he's gone. Listen to the crowd. 73 yards. And the extra point. We were waiting for him to bust loose. 73 yards. It's all Oregon. The three yards off the punt return. And it looked like he was just going to let that ball flutter down there, and then he took it at the last second and did a little 180 pirouette and was gone. Hey, but Kevin, don't you think that now, after how many years here, that duck, he should be in shape by now? <laughs> he should. <laughs> He's got to have some pipes underneath that. I'm telling you. No question. Dante Abram is knocked down at about the 17-yard line. Well, that's murderer's row right there, Adam. That's what that is. Yeah, you look at these three, you, you compare it to the uh, boxer's repertoire. I think Marcus Mariota, he's the jab that, that, that hits you off balance. Kenyon Barner, he, he's the body blows. And DeAnthony Thomas, he brings the haymaker. Mm. And he hasn't been able to get on track here in the Pac-12 until here today. But you see that you give him some space. And it's really fun to watch. Well, Duck, you know he's not ripped, <laughs> but that's, that's called country strong. That's what that is. Webb goes to work now. Jordan Webb, transfer from Kansas, flings it out near side. And incomplete. 
Let's go down to Yogi Roth standing on the sideline. Yogi. Yeah, well, it's 42 nothing right now, Oregon. For this defense, they still have to play extremely sound. This is what Nick Aliotti talked to us about yesterday. He wanted to make sure they're still lining up in their right gaps because remember, as this season goes on, not only is SC next weekend, but they've got Stanford and Oregon State who run very similar offenses. Thank you, Yogi. There's a look at Nick Aliotti. An animated, fun guy. It's terrific. Yeah, he's to going there and meet with him. Don't you feel fired up and ready to yeah, tackle yeah. the day, don't you? Uh, he's after a you guy. talk to Nick. I think he's a guy I could play for. Webb, quick turn, looks left side. And avoiding a tackle is Nelson Spruce. But then Oregon is so good, swarming to the football in groups. Michael Clay down there finally finishes him off. They run to the football. That's Aliotti was saying one reason we have 108 takeaways is because we run to every play. We're there at the scene. Ball tipped, we're going to get it. And that's, that's a hallmark of every great defense, any level you play at. And that was one of the things when we had great defenses under Lovey Smith running the Tampa 2 defense. It doesn't matter what scheme you use, but when you run to the ball with a relentless attitude, you're going to make things happen. And the Oregon Ducks do it at a great level. Third and 11, Webb is back. And a hard rush applied, and he is finally knocked down. Tyson Coleman sneaks in there. Boy, Coleman's been on a couple of plays so far this afternoon. Yeah, he came off of the edge earlier, made a tackle in the backfield. He had a tip ball earlier on this drive. He affected the throw out on a quick screen. And then here again, he fights and fights. He keeps his tempo up. He keeps the pressure up and is finally able to get to the quarterback. Nice game so far for Tyson Coleman. Chance for Oregon to get their young people some playing time experience. Leading here 42 nothing, 928 to go in the first half. Darrell O'Neill will let it fly from his own three yard line. This is going to flutter down to about the 50 yard line. We'll back check and actually work against Colorado. They'll try to sweep it forward, and it's actually touched down there at about the 43 yard line. Penalty, Penalty flag out on the field. John Hockley, our referee this afternoon. Ed Hockley, of course, his father, distinguished NFL official for many, many years. Doug Wilson, the umpire, head linesman is James Warry. And the back judge there is James Settle, conferring with the umpire and referee. They've been busy today. A member of the kicking team illegally batted the ball. That 10 yard foul will be enforced from the end of the play. First down, Oregon. Friends and neighbors, remember tomorrow night, recap the entire weekend's Pac 12 football action with Football Rewind presented by Five Hour Energy. Get scores and highlights from the Pac 12 and around the country. That's Football Rewind presented by Five Hour Energy tomorrow night at 9 right here on Pac-12 Network. Showdown Saturday, Pac-12 football wall to wall. We've got some beauties for you this afternoon and later on this evening. Oregon, Will Murphy, near side drag down at about the 32-yard line. Yeah, they spread it around here at Oregon. They have so many talented young players here. John Embry trying to build his program now to second year out of Colorado, class of 88. Assistant here, Colorado as well. Mariota underthrows Will Murphy. Murphy, Murphy, the senior from Albany, Oregon, brings up a third and three. And then those last two plays, Kevin, that's an example of Mariota seeing what the defense is giving him. They're loading up the box, trying to take away Kenyon Barner. He sees the matchup on the outside, just gets it out as quick as he can. Right side, stutter step, spinning up through the hash marks. It's Byron Marshall. Now Marshall, we've seen earlier this year in a game that you and I and Yogi did, Adam, put 125 yards on Tennessee Tech, 100 yards in the third quarter. Out of San Jose, 5'10", true freshman. He can go. He can go. He's going to get it this time. Stabs left, moves right, little hesitation, dragged down to inside the 19-yard line. 
Well, Kevin, you say hesitation. I say too much dancing right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a freshman. He's watching his partner, DeAnthony Thomas. Can Jan Barner get open in the open or get loose in the open field? He wants some of that. But young man, you just got to hit the hole and your time is going to come. Thunder and lightning right there. DeAnthony Thomas, Kenyon Varner. They have struck early and often here this afternoon. Again, they'll go to Byron Marshall this time. Adam puts his head down and grinds forward to the left side of the line of scrimmage. Paul Vigo, who's been on a lot of action today, makes the stop for the Buffaloes. And Thomas is coming back in for a second helping. Thomas today, five carries, 97 yards, and a touchdown. And of course, that punt return, a dash of 73 for a touchdown as well. Mariota fakes the handoff, goes right side. Great little tackle, up ending him just by a shoestring out there. It was Terrell Smith to get Marcus Mariota. It was a great tackle. I mean, that's that's a tough tackle against a great athlete, Marcus Mariota, on the ground, and he almost is able to break it. Of course, he doesn't make that tackle. That's a touchdown. Another part of that play, the key block was on Everett Barnyard to third. He was the right tackle, got up to the linebacker and allowed Mariota to have that initial seam. Smith, the junior from Patterson, New Jersey. And there's a throw from Mariota in the end zone. Josh Huff looked like it went through his outstretched hands. That had some velocity on it. There's tight coverage, Ray Polk. Second game back, injured his ankle on the first game of the season. And last week against the passing attack of USC, a tough comeback for him as well as the rest of the secondary. But right there, nice coverage on Huff. Mariota, hands off. And again, it's Byron Marshall getting the call. Marshall's older brother Cameron plays for Arizona State University. Two were reunited last weekend down there in Tempe. And Arizona State got off to a quick start. Mariota turned the ball over, and within seven seconds, Arizona State's on the board 7-0. He and couldn't then, have scripted it any, any better. Oh, could have. But then it happened. It <laughs> sure again and again. <laughs> it happened quick. In fact, 21 unanswered points in the uh, second quarter for Oregon. They were up 43-7 and a half. Near side, great pass. Boy, that was thrown on the money by Marcus Mariota. And again, Oregon cashes in. It was Daryl Hawkins on the receiving end. The junior from Omaha, his second touchdown reception of the year. And this was just a little pick play on the outside, man coverage. And Mar Mariota waits for his wide receiver to clear. Ray Polk was on the coverage. He got rubbed off a little bit from the slant that was coming from the outside. And Mariota X marks the spot. Ducks have been good. Oh, very good. As they get tuned up for USC next weekend in Southern California. 6-16 left. First half, 49-0. Oregon. Coming up at halftime at our State Farm Halftime Report. Rick Neuheisel. Curtis Conway, Jeremy Bloom, and a cast of thousands back in our studio at halftime. That was something. We, we did the USC game last week talking to Lane Kiffin. And even through the first half, penalties, big deal. Something that's really been hurting them again now against Arizona. They He promised it was going to get cleaned up, evidently. It hasn't happened yet. Colorado a moment of indecision, but they make the right decision to let it go through the end zone and a touchback and they'll bring it up to the 25 yard line. Dr. Pepper halftime report coming up. USC trouble with Arizona. Shootout at Sun Devil Stadium expected and first half recap and analysis from the assembled multitude. UCLA of course at Arizona State. And ongoing USC at Arizona. The fellows will have the update. Substitution of quarterback Connor Wood steps in now for Colorado. And a hit, or actually, it looks like it's Nick Hirschman. Thank you, pardon. Nick Hirschman from Los Santos 
California, the 6'4 sophomore. Jordan Webb just unable to get anything going for his group. And let's face it, Webb probably worn down. 31 sacks on the year he has suffered coming into this game. And was hurried a number of times here in the first half. So second and seven out of the Buffalo. Trying to create some sort of positive. Here's the big man cutting outside 40. Passes off a tackler down to the 45-yard line. Christian Powell, Christian Powell again, the ball carrier. Monty Kiffin, the coordinator down there at USC last weekend, said of Powell, he, he's a guy that you have to respect. Big, strong guy who can break some tackles. And most of their yards today from Powell have been in a one-back running set. And they've traditionally used a fullback, that pro-style downhill power. But the one-back set, getting some things done on the ground today for Powell in this offense. Seven carries, 62 yards for Christian Powell. First down, Buffaloes. Hirschman, the handoff. And the little Abram carries across midfield. Jitterbug, Abram takes it right side to pick up of a couple. Let's go down to the field. Yogi Ross. You know what's so impressive about this Oregon defense? That coming into the season, they're too deep. Only average 1.3 years of playing experience. So it's not like they've played a lot of football. When you watch them fly to the football, Adam, they show relentlessness that you've been talking about all season long, and it is just impressive. Well, that's the thing that stands out, and Chip Kelly does such a great job of not allowing excuses to creep into their vocabulary. It's next man up. It doesn't matter if you're a freshman. You're expected to play at the very same level. They don't talk about injuries. They have a laser-like focus that I think has allowed them to eliminate most of the distractions that other teams allow to affect their play. Well, Nick Hirschman got planted, and then Cass on the receiving end of that pass. He's hobbled, but gets up under his own power. A first down now for Colorado. And Hirschman stood in that pocket, and he got popped when he let it go. Nice play by the quarterback, and a reception by Cassa, who limps over here to be attended to by the training staff of Colorado. First down for the Buffalo. And so far, nice looking drive. Can they do what they didn't do last week? And that's finish. Best drive so far. Hirschman, pass intended but broken up. Down there was Dior Mathis, the sophomore from Detroit, Michigan, who came in there and rocked the world of the Colorado Buffaloes. Big hit. Keenan Canty, the intended receiver. And Hirschman goes back to work. We have the 6'1 junior transfer from Kansas. Hirschman, the 6'4 sophomore, a little more prototypical pro style quarterback in stature. Hands off, Powell bangs into the second level of the Oregon Ducks to about the 31 yard line. By far, the best and most sustained drive that Colorado has experienced this afternoon. And again, the one back set, and they have the freshman over there playing right tackle, Stefan Namebot, a guy that they really feel has a ton of ability, and they've tried to find ways to get him in, ingrained into the offense more and more. He did a nice job getting downfield, getting his hands on some linebackers, and allowed Powell to have a nice game. This name itself has a ring to it, doesn't it? <laughs> 6 8 3 0 5 name bot. There he is. Third and four. Toss it left side. Powell knocked down. Boy, they sniffed that out in a hurry. It looked like it was maybe Taylor Hart there. It was the first man to get it. Hart having a terrific year this year, Adam. The five sacks tied for the club lead. Uh, off the edge, they come with the pressure. But the inside pursuit down the line of scrimmage from Hart is what allowed him to make that play. That's just outstanding. Defensive line, play goes away from you. You turn down the line of scrimmage, you hustle, and you make the play. Fourth down and five for the Buffaloes. Hirschman in the gun. Back to throw. Loads up, ball deflected up for grabs and knocked down incomplete. And the Oregon Ducks stop the Buffaloes and take them. And once again, Taylor Hart, long body, six foot six, off of the left side, sees the ball, puts his hands up, bats the ball down, 
You know, Deion Jordan gets a lot of love out there on the other defensive end position, yep. but Taylor Hart has simply just been outstanding this season. Six sacks, your five sacks, and that was tied with Jordan for the season lead for this team. Or some good DNs in the state of Oregon. You consider Scott Crichton and Wynn down there at Corvallis playing for Mike Riley's Oregon State Beavers. Is that going to be a battle at the end of the year? It's shaping up, yep. Two, the styles, the schemes could not be any more different. Mm -hmm. Of course, Chip Kelly, the new age, running this offense to perfection. Mike Riley running the same system now for nine years at Oregon State. Brian Bennett, guy that's known for wheels. Quarterback keeper running right side and deep into Colorado territory. Brian Bennett, terrific athlete, 6'3 sophomore from Encino, California. This is what you get when you get you put a linebacker into a quarterback's body that can run. You know, Brian Bennett is outstanding running the quarterback series, the single wing series. And you saw a great example of that right there. Really efficient quarterback stepped in for an injured Darren Thomas last year played in eight games. And you see Oregon just tireless. This time, no frills. Byron Marshall. Just plow horses up between <laughs> the hash marks and gets it down to about the 15 yard line. Since you made that comment about dancing around, he has gone to work. <laughs> he sure has. I got an open line right into his helmet. <laughs> 17 yard pickup. Here's Bennett, left side, and a good tackle applied. There have been some moments where Colorado's defense has come up with some plays. Paul Vigo has made some terrific one on one decisions out there. Yeah, there's been moments, but this is what they, what happens. You know, they put so much pressure in Oregon more than any other offense. When you make that mistake, they make you pay immediately. It's not just a seven or an eight yard gain. It's a gash. Marshall leaps over an intended tackler down there and gets down to the 10 yard line. Byron Marshall says, you know, I know we've we do over 400 reps during the week, but this real-time game action, it'll gash you. <laughs> and they keep going back to him. Bennett in the shotgun. Hands off to Marshall. Changes direction right to left and drags a tackler down to the five-yard line. Marshall in the embrace of Terrell Smith and Kirk Poston came in to help out. Third down at six, 24 seconds left in the half, and Bennett into the end zone. Touchdown, Oregon. Brian Bennett. Oregon six for six in the red zone. And they've just kind of hit a point Colorado has where you can start see it starting to wear on them. Guys are walking around with their hands on their hips. They don't have as much energy in their step. And right now, the keep series, the zone read series between Bennett and Marshall has been working like a charm. Oregon squaring up now for the extra point that would make it 56 nothing. Snap hold kick is up. It is good. There you have it. 56 nothing. One of the factors that the Oregon Ducks really stress is how do we do on both sides of the football offensively defensively in the red zone Chip Kelly explains his philosophy uh, great teams are I think made um, not from the 20 to the 20 but from the 20 yard line on it and this uh, do you have the ability to punch it in and score in a tight constricted area uh, and then you do have the ability to stop people on a short field and if you can do that that's what great teams do and I think that that's what separates good team from great teams is, is not moving the ball between the 20s but what you do when the ball's inside the 20s both offensively and defensively so how have the Oregon Ducks done today well bear very very efficient thank you six for <laughs> six in the red zone today. Take a look at the scoring. Barner a couple uh, by ground. DeAnthony Thomas one on the ground. Won the punt return for 73 yards which was magic. Marcus Mariota has run for one. Bennett has run for one. Everybody getting in the action this afternoon. Braylon Addison has caught one and Daryl Hawkins has caught another. 447 total yards by the Oregon Ducks. Today. And here's what's incredible Kevin. You look at the Ducks and their numbers is eye popping as they are this season. They could be worse. The starters on this team average only about two and a half quarters yeah. per game. 
And so that just remarkable. If they played their starters the entire game, the entire season this year, these numbers would be, you know, out of this world. I'm not sure what Josh Huff is hiding from, but he is <laughs> using Kenyon Barner as a screen over there on the sideline. 14 seconds left in the first half. Colorado back to work. Hirschman hands off to Powell. And across the 25 yard line comes Christian Powell. Well, John Embry said, We have got to score points. He said that before the USC game when they scored just two field goals, and they are right now held to a big fat zero at half here in Oregon. 56 0. The Oregon Ducks leading the Colorado Buffaloes down to Yogi Rock. Coach, a week ago, four to three points, 56 so far thus far today. How's your offense playing? You know, I think it's a combination of everything. Our defense is playing really well. I think our offense is playing well. And obviously, we got a special team's return for a touchdown. So we're getting everybody to contribute right now. And how about Kenyon and DeAnthony? It seems as though they are just on a different you know, speed, a different level thus far in the first half. They're two dynamic football players. You know, we, we got to keep scheming ways to get the ball in their hands. But, you know, two special kids, and we're happy we have them. Thanks, Coach. Right, thanks, Coach. Back up to you guys. Thank you, Yogi. Halfway through 56 0, Oregon leading Colorado. A reminder to stay tuned as we will check in with the Pac 12 Network Studio right after this. Welcome everybody to Rich Brooks Field, Autzen Stadium, Eugene, Oregon, number four by way of the BCS, the Oregon Ducks, all over the Colorado Buffaloes, 56 nothing, halfway through. Highlights, explosion plays, it was all Oregon. Adam Archuleta in the first half. It's exactly what we've seen Oregon do time and time again. Kenyon Barney, Barner starts the party off. Marcus Mariota gets across the goal line. Just a few plays later, Kenyon Barner for his second touchdown of the day. And then DeAnthony Thomas with a rope a dope just when you think it's all bad. He suckers the Colorado special teams in and explodes for a 73 yard punt return for a touchdown. And how about Colorado, or how about Oregon? You look at these stats, those are great game stats. Colorado would love to have those stats for an entire game. We're only one half into it, Kevin. Sony game snaps. The snapshot, 311 rushing yards for Oregon this afternoon. So Yogi Roth, a wet, sloppy track, no problem for the Ducks. No, it really hasn't been. Had got a chance to talk to John Embry at halftime. He said he wants to make sure that his team competes more, competes better. They're shooting themselves in the in the foot with turnovers and poor decisions. Injury update, Gus Handler, the center, is out, and wide receiver Nelson Spruce is out as well. That's a huge blow for Colorado. Spruce came in as the leading receiver for this team. Colorado will take the opening kickoff here in the second half. Dante Abram. He is knocked down across the 25 yard line and that is where Colorado will set up shop Gordon. I should say Jordan Webb started the game for the Colorado Buffaloes. Nick Hirschman came in late in the second quarter. So we'll get a look down at the field now and it will indeed be Nick Hirschman the sophomore from Los Gatos California coming back out onto the field. Adam Colorado looking for uh, any amount of positivity and on the field right now. He needs some, some positive numbers in the offense. For the play action pass, Hirschman quick pass intended for Nick Cassa, who, when last we saw him, was walking off the field hobbled with what appeared to be a problem with a knee. Good to see Cassa back in the lineup, but that falls incomplete to the converted defensive end. So that brings up a second down now for the Colorado Buffaloes. Buffalo's back-to-back -back road games against heavyweights at the Coliseum last weekend against USC when they stalled repeatedly in the red zone and turned the ball over six times. And USC scoring five times off the turnovers. 
Left side goes Christian Powell. The big man, 235 pounds, rumbles across for a first down down near the 40-yard line. Powell joined in the backfield by Tony Jones, a sophomore from Patterson, New Jersey, that we've not seen much of this afternoon. And they've kind of rotated both of them throughout the season. Powell missed a few games, had a deep thigh bruise that he suffered against UCLA. Jones has been great in the outside game and in the screen game, catching a lot of balls out of the backfield. Powell again, this time Powell right. Powell left, Powell right. And Colorado keeping the ball on the ground, maybe the best way that you can, I was about to say stop, but at least slow the Oregon offensive onslaught is to keep the ball on the ground and grind it out with Powell 12 carries 85 yards so far and that's kind of been their theme this season to get used to the four yards per play live to play another down don't make mistakes be efficient they did that a little bit last week they didn't score in the red zone today a lot of mistakes have have made them be behind on schedule and the down and distance and just have not helped themselves out very much Vincent Hobbs, the ball slightly underthrown, but that ball needs to be caught out there by the freshman from Dallas, Texas. 6-3. Good-looking receiver who actually had a pretty good afternoon last weekend in Southern California. Hobbs will come out now. John Embry will rotate receivers out there. They have four catches, 51 yards last week mm -hmm. against USC. They used them a lot in three wide receiver sets. A lot of option routes in the middle against linebackers in the nickel against USC. Gerald Thomas comes in. He's the wide out at the top of your screen. Webb back to throw. Loads and fires. Floats a pass complete. And this is going to be for a large swath of ground. Tyler McCullough is dragged down at about the 33-yard line. McCullough, 6'5 target, a sophomore, gets himself open. You see McCullough right here. He's just going to run a drag route underneath. And you had a guy at the point of attack. Looked like Isaac Dixon, the safety, who had a chance to tackle, but McCullough, who is not much of a speed burner. These wide receivers really aren't going to scare you deep, but at six foot five, a big frame, nice possession type receiver. So McCullough on a pickup of 24 yards. And then they give it to Powell again, and they'll let him grind ahead. Actually, it's Tony Jones, who we just spoke of. Jones, the sophomore from Don Bosco Prep in Patterson, New Jersey. It's a big wall right there. It's a big, it sure is. Big sea of green. And now is some valuable opportunity for Nick Aliotti's second team defense to get in there. That's one of the advantages of being so good and getting out so early is having your young guys get a chance to play in meaningful downs. Yogi Roth reminded us in the first half that Aliotti's defense, Adam, had about a year and a half of experience on the defensive side of the football. They really turned out a terrific year last year, but because their offense was so strong, so innovative and different, you didn't hear a lot about the defense. But they score so fast that the defense is on the field a lot against quality teams. <laughs> hey, you can't get caught up in statistics. That's the one thing. It doesn't accurately reflect how good this defensive this defense is. But what they do extremely well, they pressure the quarterback, they force turnovers, and it just filthy in the red zone. Seven play drive so far for Colorado. Hirschman back to throw steadies, flips it left side. Powell coming out of the backfield, dragged down at the 30-yard line, and a gain of a few on the play. Derek Malone makes the stop on Powell. Malone's been in on a lot of action today for the Buffaloes, or I should say for... Uh, the Oregon Ducks, junior from Colton, California, a sophomore, one of the youthful Ducks on the defensive side of the ball. Six tackles so far today. And that was a, just a heck of a play. They tried to set up the screen over there to the left to Powell, and Malone had to fight off an offensive lineman to make that play. He doesn't get off that block. It's going to be a first down for Powell. So nice job by Malone to get off the block and make the play. Fourth and seven, here we go, Oregon. Four in the box are going to bring five off the edge pressure. Pass across, complete. This one is to Hobbs inside the 10-yard line. Vincent Hobbs, big target at Hirschman. Threw it right on a dime, leading him 
to the seven yard line. Oh, this skinny post. Eric Armstead, number nine, almost gets his hand up to bat that ball down. Hirschman, he stays in there, holds the ball, waits for Hobbs to clear, and gets it right in there right before the free safety is able to come over and make the play. Nice fourth down conversion mm -hmm. in tight near the red area for Colorado. 24 yard pickup and that one from the 30 now puts him well within the red zone where Oregon has been nearly unstoppable. Hurstman's going to test that and throws a little fade to the back into the end zone but incomplete intended there for Nick Casa. The Oregon Ducks are the national leaders in red zone defense 15 scores 29 trips inside the 20. Just under 52% that leads the country. Only 14 touchdowns and 19 trips inside the 20 in Pac-12 play. So the odds working against the Buffaloes here, Adam, on a second and six deal. Thomas, the man in motion, lines up at the H-back. The handoff to Powell bangs across the five and drags people down to inside the two-yard line. That's a good play call the way this kid's been playing today. Yeah, he can get downhill, and they've, they've had a chance to get him going. And a couple of runs called back early because of penalties, but that's what he brings to this offense. He has the size, he's got the speed to complement the size. And as he develops throughout his career, down here in the red zone is where he's going to have to do some of his best work. 11 play drive, Colorado tees it up, third and two. Goal to go at the two-yard line to turn the handoff. Powell's going to work right side to the edge, and he is stopped and driven back from the goal line. And the indication is ball down at about the half-yard mark. Well, Dior Mathis, the corner, number three, he comes up and fills the run perfectly, and that allows Christian Powell. That makes Christian Powell to cut up inside where Tyson Coleman was waiting for him, number 33. He turns him around, rejects him from the end zone, Nice defensive stand right there. Here we go. Fourth and goal. Let's see what John Embry's Buffaloes are made of right here. Backs in the eye. Christian Powell is the up back. Jones the tail of the eye. The turn, the hand off to Powell. Second surge, end zone, touchdown. Colorado Buffaloes. A sustained drive by the Buffaloes, and it is Powell who has dragged them down the field and muscles it into the end zone for the touchdown. And they bring both running backs into the game. Tony Jones was the tailback. Christian Powell lined up as the fullback. And Oregon had a chance to make the play in the backfield right there, but the power of, of Powell goes right into the end zone. 13 play drive, 72 yards. The extra point is added, and Colorado is on the board for the first time tonight here at Eugene, Oregon. Eric Bieniemy trying to build on a success. Colorado Buffaloes open things up here in the third with a touchdown capped by a one yard burst from Christian Powell, the freshman big man. Looking out of the eye formation down on the goal line. Byron Marshall will take the kickoff, and Marshall, the freshman, is surrounded at the 25 yard line. Friends want to hear what the coaches have to say about the weekend's football action and tune in Tuesday night for the Pac 12 playbook. You'll get the sideline insight from the guys calling all the shots. That's Pac-12 Playbook, Tuesday night at 9 on Pac-12 Networks. Mike Yam, Rick Neuheisel and company in studio. They'll be along at the completion of this game. Showdown Saturday continuing on the Pac-12 Networks. Brian Bennett comes in to quarterback the Oregon Ducks. And promptly hands off the ball, squirts free, but it is re-recovered by... The Oregon Ducks. Marshall's Kelly gets down to Ducks. surround it with two arms for Oregon and actually a gain on the play. B.J. Kelly, Richard Freshman from Fresno, California, alertly. B.J. Kelly on that fumble recovery. So brings up a second down and one now for Brian Bennett. Bennett from Encino, California. 
Hands off. And a gain of a few on the play. Ducks run A.L. Ford in there, the running back. And he picks up the required yards for the first down. And Paul Vigo was shaken up. Vigo's had a very good afternoon, but he took a real pop on that play. So they'll take a look at Vigo, who may have gotten popped in the eye. And it looks like a bit of an eye gouge. Ducks first and ten. Bennett again. Hands off to Ford. And again, it's popped free and comes right to Ray Polk. Polk recovers down to the 30-yard line. And they are in business now. Actually, it was Jared Bell that came up with it. Bell, the sophomore from Ontario, California, had it popped right to him. A sloppy start here for Oregon. And I couldn't quite see who popped that ball out, but a nice job recovering it. That's two fumbles in a row here. Their defense, the second team defense, gives up a touchdown, but this isn't the way Chip Kelly wanted to come out to start the second half. Nice job for Colorado, finally getting something positive going, getting the ball now in plus territory. Let's see if Eric Bieniemy's crew can punch it in one more time. Well, Ford, the sophomore, has it jabbed away in consecutive plays. Hirschman hands off, Powell, quick hitter right up the middle and got enough room to square his shoulders and churn forward to the 20-yard line. Great job of the offensive line there, Adam, to open up a huge hole. Another one-back run downhill. It's been the one successful thing that Colorado's been able to do on the ground. Much more production, actually, than they've had in the ground game in the last few games of the season. So if they can continue to build off of this running series, they might have something. Two backs offset. And they'll stay in to protect Hirschman, who unwinds and throws a bullet complete to Nick Cassa. Did he make the catch? No, they say he did not. It was trapped. It bounced off the turf down there inside the 15-yard line. This has to be the area of the field that Nick Casa gets involved. This is the big threat that they have, and he's done a good job, so they have to find a way, scheme some ways to get him the ball more often. That's really good coverage right there by the linebacker, Anthony Wallace, and one-on-one -on -one coverage to break up that pass. Colorado working against the twos and threes of the Oregon defense has put a touchdown on the board and now on a sustained drive getting the ball in their best field position. They give it back to Powell. It's going to elude a tackler in the second level and Kareen into the end zone for a touchdown. Christian Powell running hard. 20 yards for the touchdown. But not bad. They go with the sweep outside and they get their fullback Alex Wood out there on the edge. And a much different pursuit from this unit from Oregon that we saw from their first unit. Their first unit, extremely relentless, physical, aggressive to the point of attack. That's not what we're seeing from the second crew. Powell, 17 rushes, 132 yards, two touchdowns, and the extra point is good. And the Buffaloes have put two tallies on the board here in this third quarter. State Cougars immediately following this game and then tonight it's Cal taking on Utah or number seven Oregon State up in Seattle to meet Washington right here on Pac-12 Networks for programming information in your area visit pac-12.com Yogi Roth on the field Adam Archuleta Kevin Calabro here at Rich Brooks Field Oxford Stadium in Eugene Oregon let's go down to the field and Yogi Roth yeah, when we talked to John Embry earlier this week, he said 
when he goes to the film on Monday, he's going to put up a position group up on the screen and say, you guys played the hardest. Last week after the USC game, it was his offensive line. Right now in the second half, we're watching his defense, his offense. All of the units collectively are playing at an extremely high level. And while the game is already obviously out of hand, Adam, I think right now Colorado, they've got to take advantage of these small wins and these little confidence builders. Yeah, Yogi, I think you're right. And if you look at the first half, seven first half drives, 63 rushing yards, zero TDs already here. Two drives in the second half, 53 rushing yards. Powell has both of the touchdowns. So regardless of who they're playing on the other side of the line of scrimmage, they must build off it, they must continue to fight, and they have to make positive plays. Yeah, and this is a program that's rebuilding. I mean, they've got 21 redshirt freshmen or true freshmen playing right now. So it's not going to happen overnight for all the Buff fans. But I think John Embry, the one thing he hasn't done, he hasn't lost the team. I mean, they've got a great collective energy among the staff and among the student athletes. And they continue to hit Adam and Yogi. A big stop there made up by Paul Vigo, who a moment ago had to go off the field with what appeared to be a problem with his eye, poked in the eye. He's back in, has 10 tackles this afternoon. Eric Bieniemy continues to get the attention of his team over there. A little bit of success breeds enthusiasm, and then you, as a coaching staff, I suppose you work off of that, don't you? That's the, that's the only thing you can do. You have to make sure that, first and foremost, that your guys continue to compete. That's what the most important thing is, and make sure the effort is there from the first snap to the last snap. Brian Bennett on a third and 12. Pass near side. Mithit Marshall. Marshall down to the 35-yard line. And boy, did he get a lick along the edge by Derek Webb. But not before Marshall was able to gain enough for the first down. Byron Marshall. You're going to watch Byron Marshall here. They set up the screen pass to the left and watch the little freeze and go right there on Greg Henderson, the cornerback, who really you have to make that open field tackle and get off the field. 14 yards for the first down. Bennett hands off to Marshall straight ahead. And drags some Buffaloes with him down near midfield. That's going to be close to another first down. Greg Brown, the defensive coordinator. Colorado. Remember, Bennett was a part-time starter last year and replacing Darren Thomas. Played in eight games. Thomas frequently injured. And he hands off to Byron Marshall. In all likelihood, Bennett and the Ducks will keep the ball on the ground here to work some clock. 5.56 remaining and leading 56-14 here in this third quarter play. And last year, Brian Bennett came in in that Arizona State game. And his first start actually was against Colorado last season. Threw for six touchdowns and zero interceptions as the starting quarterback last season in relief duty. Fakes the handoff, pulls it away, and carries himself. Veering out off right tackle to about the 45-yard line. Brings up a second down possession now for Chip Kelly and the Ducks. Shamrocks on the Colorado pass sheet there. What's that all about? There's got to be some significance to that, Adam. A little luck never hurt anybody. Bennett again on the carry. And he was stood up and then he got hammered by Orms. Parker Orms comes in to finish him. Well, Chip Kelly with Shamrocks, the native of Manchester, New Hampshire. Used to coach, uh, coach football at Columbia in New York City. <laughs> Bennett back to throw, floats one man wide open and tripped up just shy of the end zone is B.J. Kelly. This one we thought that the Ducks were going to resign themselves to keeping it on the ground. They go up top. No, they're so good at the play action pass. B.J. Kelly lines up on the left side, tight to the formation, and then sprints across the field. And you run, you run, you run. Defensively, you start to get undisciplined. Your eyes start to meander. They're not in the right place, and then before you know it, B.J. Kelly is behind your secondary, and Oregon once again on the doorstep. And again, they go to Marshall, and he tries to lean forward. 
And knocked down second down and three with 412 to go here in this third. Loses two on the play. Ducks on the road next week to take on USC to meet the Trojans. Bennett fakes the handoff and everybody bit. And he just had to decide what angle he was going to take to the end zone. He takes the outside route and scores from three yards out and the Ducks are on the board again. And this, this was actually the wrong read. Uzo Deribe, arguably one of the best athletes on the team for Colorado, stays outside to play the quarterback. Brian Bennett gives him the one-two, gets around the left edge. Another touchdown. The touchdown is good. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct by Oregon number 54, taunting. That 15-yard foul will be enforced on the kickoff. So Hamani Stevens with some commentary after the fact. Bennett scores the touchdown. That's his second of the afternoon. Ten plays, 75 yards, and 407 time of possession. Kelly down there demonstrating adamantly to uh, one of his interior linemen what he wants in terms of footwork. Extra point is added, 63-14 Oregon. 3.55 left in the third. Got an hour? <laughs>Defense kind of relaxed a little bit. Looked like he was going to let it go back to the end zone. Let it bounce <laughs> hop a little bit. What happened there? Uh, what happened is DeAnthony Thomas happened. He's faster than anybody that Colorado has seen, and they've seen some fast players here in the Pac-12. But you give him a sliver, and that's all it takes is one little sliver, and DeAnthony Thomas is, is going to have you looking at the back of his jersey. Oh, a big stick, and the faithful love that. Top applied out there by Ayeli Ford, who had fumbled the ball in the offensive and comes in on special teams and, I don't know, possibly atones. Good play. Although he fumbled the ball away and Colorado promptly took it into the end zone with Hirschman at the controls. Hirschman, since coming in for Webb, 4 of 11, and has led two touchdown drives and has put 14 points on the board. Both scores here in the third. Oregon leads 63 to 14. Hirschman goes to work. He started with a handoff to Powell, and he leans forward, and in rush hour traffic, knockdown, flags fly. Goodness knows what was going on down there in the middle of all that. After the play was over, number 34 of Oregon unnecessarily came into the pile, led with his helmet, targeting. 15 yards will be added to the end of the run. First down. Raheem Cassell targeting 15 yards. And so the Buffaloes march down the field here. They'll start up across the 45 yard line. First down and 10 with 339 left here in the third. And Raheem Cassell, he's part of that second group of linebackers and really a group that Nick Aliotti said he'd be watching. He wants to see that group step up, take charge, make the same calls, play with the same intensity that he sees from his first group. Man in motion, far side to near side is Thomas. They flick it outside, ball up in the air, ball intercepted. And Oregon football, Derek Malone read that ball fluttering into the air and picked it off. Oh, they're an opportunistic bunch. I mean, that ball has to be caught. It's Vincent Hobbs. We talked about it. Had a great game last week against USC. You know, Nick Hirschman, he throws the ball a little bit behind him, but really there's no excuse. And you want to make plays. You want to do the right thing. Great job by Isaac Dixon, the free safety, to come over, pop that ball out. And Tyson Col or Derek Malone running from inside out, pursuing to the football. And remember what Nick Aliotti said, when you run to the football, Good things happen, you get turnovers. There's a great example. Oregon coming in, number one in the conference, and takeaways at 108, third best in the nation. You know, they've had four pick sixes this year, which uh, ties a club record set way back in 1991. 
So anytime, <laughs> anytime a guy gets his hands on an interception, it's just one other way that this offense, or should say defense, and sometimes can be your best offense, leads to points. And those were all against Pac-12 teams. Trips to the near side, Bennett. Rolls out, flicks a pass near side, getting a block downfield and opening things up to the 20-yard line. Flags fly. That was Blake Stanton, the wide receiver, who had a man ahead. That's about where the flag went down. During the run, holding by the offense number 18. 10 yards, replay, second down. All right, it's Dwayne Stafford with a hold, so they'll bring it back. Oregon with 63 points. We could be looking at a record. USC holds the all-time record against Cal, 1930, 74 points. USC in 54 at 72. Most recently, USC 69 points on Washington State in 08. Quick blast up the middle. It's Ford getting a reprieve. Out of the doghouse, maybe after that special teams play, Ford to the 11-yard line is knocked down. Now how about, Kevin, uh, uh, looking back on that last graphic, only one team in the last 10 years is on that list, and nobody before 1970. Yep. You would think that in this day and age of scoring points that we'd see more modern teams on that list. Bennett on a keeper, works the edge, and a good open field tackle. Jared Bell steps up to uh, chop down Bennett. Well, there was just a wicked crackback block on number 13, Parker Orms. Mm. And I couldn't see the wide receiver who that was. It might have been Eric Dungey. Yeah. Number 19. Or Blake Stanton, excuse me, was the guy that came in. But that was a vicious crackback block on Parker Orms. And Parker Orms, he's a tough guy. He is a tough cat. He got his bell rung last weekend at USC. Back in the lineup today, the junior from Wheat Ridge, Colorado, goes off for an evaluation on the bench. Bennett, a keeper, good stiff arm, but trying to make that hard cut. Slips on the rain-sodden field down at about the 16-yard line. Brian Bennett, just another one of the weapons at the disposal, obviously, of uh, Chip Kelly. Colt Layerla has not played today. Layerla, we were told, was nicked up following last weekend's game against Arizona State. Layerla, interesting, sophomore, 6'5", 246, who actually has four touchdowns through the air this year. Bennett takes the handoff. Bennett untouched. Bennett in zone. Touchdown. Ducks. And they're up to 69 points. 17-yard carry. For Brian Bennett, who looked like he was in second gear that time. Ten carries, 73 yards, three touchdowns for Bennett. There's so many ways that they can beat you. They basically run the quarterback lead up inside, fake the ball to Ford. Bennett follows, and there's so many ways that this Oregon team can beat you. Brian Bennett is extremely efficient in moving the ball on the ground, playing the keep series. Rob Beard actually the extra point, and Oregon leads Colorado 70 to 14 with a minute left in the third. Now remember at the conclusion of today's football triple header, be sure to catch all the day's highlights on the State Farm Post Game Report. We'll recap this game and all other big contests around the Pac-12. The State Farm Post Game Report tonight, following today's football coverage on Pac-12 Networks. Mike Yam, Rick Neuhausel, the coach, Curtis Conway. Jeremy Bloom. And a helpful cast of thousands in the studio. But you thought this was easy? It takes a thousand folks to get this thing going. And the duck continues to do push ups. <laughs> Drop and give me 70. It might be Dan Gable in that duck, you know, <laughs> that duck costume, Kevin. <laughs> Dan Gable was a. Uh, World-class wrestler out of Iowa who won the 1972 gold medal. Chip Kelly said we had Gable in to speak to us a couple of years ago. And Gable told the story of how you can't rest on your laurels. Gable said that following 
winning the gold medal. He went out and ran 10 miles as a gift to himself <laughs> because he ordinarily Adam runs 12 a day. He gave himself 10 that day after winning the gold medal. And Kelly's telling this story with great relish. He said it was one of the greatest things I've ever seen. He says, if that's not inspiring, I don't know what is. And then we asked him if he wanted to come and watch practice, and he said, well, what I'd actually like to do is work out. Can I work out somewhere <laughs> around here? Yeah, they found a place for him. He's inside that duck costume. He'd get plenty of workout. Dan Gable. So with 53 seconds left here in the third quarter, Colorado scoring a couple of unanswered touchdowns, and then the Ducks go back to the air to get to the doorstep, and Bennett runs it in for his third touchdown of the afternoon. Christian Powell again will get it. They continue to go back to Powell, who is logging some work. 18 carries, 125 yards, and two touchdowns for the freshman from Upland, California. Buffalo's one and six on the year, one and three in conference. But as they look toward the future, the Buffaloes and John Embry referred to the fact that they just can't. It's an extremely difficult for them to score points. Twenty again. First one throws to the side, and particularly in this conference, you have better come up with some aspect of your offense, Adam, that can get you explosion plays and thus more points. And it all comes down to having that game changer, something that they don't have. And they need that guy who could change the game. End of the third quarter, Oregon 70. Colorado 14. We'll come back with a fourth quarter run here from Watson in a moment. Dodson Stadium, it got started early and often. Marcus Mariota plunges into the end zone, and then Kenyon Barner working the edge as he does so well, taking it back and into the end zone. Barner's had a great day with over 100 yards, two touchdowns, and then DeAnthony Thomas, a.k.a. Black Mamba, 73 yards. Wall of blockers going to the edge, forget about it. Oregon getting it done to the tune of 70 points on the board. Hirschman calls his own number, the quarterback keeper, and he is able to churn his way out near the 30-yard line to pick up a 7 or 8 on the play for Hirschman. Nick Hirschman is a sophomore from Los Gatos, California. Took over for Jordan Webb, who has started this year for the Buffaloes. Coming on in the second quarter, Jim Hirschman. And Nick Hirschman, he wasn't really able to practice in spring ball. And Connor Wood took most of the reps because Jordan Webb wasn't there. Nick Hirschman, of course, was injured. And so he hasn't had a lot of practice here in the offseason and throughout training camp as the guy. Marshall back to field the front as a running start at the 40. And stubbed his toe and ends up down at the 45-yard line where the Ducks take over after this. One of the things this offense does so well is block on the outside. Watch the devastation right there from wide receiver Blake Stanton on Parker Orms on the crack back block. That's wicked, Kevin. Yeah, that's uh, going to be felt tonight. New quarterback now for the Oregon Ducks is Dustin Haynes. He's a junior from right here in Eugene, Oregon. Hometown kid. Getting a chance to play here. Ryan Bennett has been put back in the barn. Three touchdowns scored on the ground for Brian Bennett. Ten carries, 73 yards. Oregon with weaponry. And of course, Marcus Mariota played in the first half, and Mariota accounted for a touchdown via the ground as well. Kenyon Barner, two TDs, nine carries over 100 yards, 104 to be exact. 
The Anthony Thomas five carries 97 yards for a touchdown this afternoon. And Mariota four carries 22 yards and a touchdown via the ground. Third and three now for Haynes. And the handoff. It's Kenny Bassett. It's knocked down. And near the 45 yard line may have picked up the first down going to be very close and they say he's got it. And Kevin I, I just keep going back to the amount that the starters have played for Oregon and just imagine the numbers and Chip Kelly talked to us they don't do Heisman campaigns they don't believe it it mm -hmm. takes away from the team message. But a guy like Kenyon Barney you have to ask yourself if he played in every game the full game with what he's been able to do so far in this season where would he be when it comes to the national Heisman picture he's already started to creep into that list mm -hmm. but his numbers would be almost double if he was able to play throughout the course of the game and then of course the scrutiny would be on all right he has amassed these numbers but against two I think the next four games obviously will tell because this is where they get into the strength of the schedule this is where they will play the top ranked teams. USC and Stanford and of course the, at the end of the year they've got the Civil War and they play Oregon State and that to be played at Corvallis and then that's going to be interesting Oregon State having one of the best rushing defenses in the Pac-12 but you have to think that the schedule has been perfect so far for Oregon yes the strength of schedule isn't there when you consider the polls but it's allowed Marcus Mariota to ease into this playing major college football for the first time as a freshman. It's allowed him to play at home quite often early in his career. It's allowed a chance for the starters to be very fresh. The wear and tear isn't there that, that as much as it would be if they were in heated battles week after week. And you go back to injuries back in 2010 when they made that national championship run. The entire season they only lost six starts to injury and that was a huge factor in their success and able to go that distance so a lot of things playing out in Oregon's favor big test next week against USC and then on to Cal so back to back road games and then the home game against Stanford and then at Oregon State so three of the remaining four after this afternoon on the road for the Ducks and they will be tested. Here's the punt lofted up there and it is recovered by Colorado and then coughed up by Colorado and Oregon may have gotten it. Let's see here. They're going to rule the ball dead down there. Apparently they will and Colorado will retain possession on Oregon's first punt of the afternoon leading 70 to 14. Ducks and the Colorado Buffaloes this afternoon homecoming here in Eugene where Oregon leads 70 to 14 they were up 56 nothing at half and Colorado managed to put a couple of touchdowns on the board in the third and now trying to build on that here in the fourth as we get back into action Kyle Slavin makes the catch and then Slavin fights off a tackler and gains a few more yards and for a first down flag on the play personal foul illegal block below the waist by the offense number 83 half the distance to the goal replay first down Dustin Ebner the guilty party take a look at Adam Archuleta's Heisman watch list Adam you just talking about Kenyon Barner and you know his numbers right now aren't going to win him the Heisman but as we mentioned we talked about it earlier with the way the rest of the season plays out the teams that he's going to be faced against playing an entire game he has a chance to really jaunt up that list and bolster his national profile but as we've seen it looked like two weeks ago Geno Smith was a lock to win the Heisman a couple of bad games all of a sudden the picture changes it's a fluid situation out there Kevin it is you saw Colin Klein at the top of that list and ironically he is from Loveland Colorado those are the types of athletes frankly you've got to keep in state you cannot allow a guy like Colin Klein to get out of state and doing a terrific job at Kansas State through the air and by ground as well 
And he couldn't have had a better week last week. 323 yards, three touchdowns, a complete beatdown against Geno Smith in West Virginia, 55 to 14. Uh, but he is really the one, the big reason for the, the rise of the Kansas State football team. Yogi, uh, A.J. McCarron, here he is, the quarterback of the number one team, Alabama. Uh, you'd, you'd have to think that the quarterback of the number one team would be odds-on favorite at this point. What's your thought on it? Yeah, I'm a huge A.J. McCarron fan. I think what Doug Nussmeyer, his offensive coordinator, new coach this year for him, he's totally changed his game. I mean, 69%. Completion percentage, 16 tugs with zero interceptions, and he's won big games. He won the national championship game a year ago. He's a, he's a really great young man. I think he's done all the right things in that position. And when you look at the Heisman, nine of the last 12 years, the Heisman's played in the BCS championship game. And so you have to ask yourself as well, who's going to snap the SEC run of six consecutive national titles as well? Yeah, well, I think... It's going to be interesting, you know, it's Notre Dame is up there. Oregon, I think, has a great shot. I think when you look about it in terms of matchup and style points, I couldn't think of a better matchup than to see Oregon, Alabama. Now, a lot of things have to happen in order for that to play out, but a lot of good teams up there in that top five right now. When you look at a, a, a matchup like that, what strikes you in terms of the matchups? What would be most interesting, you suppose, in the matchups between those two teams? Oregon's going to let it bounce down here at about the 29-yard uh, line. Hold that thought. We'll come right back. 7:51 remaining, and Oregon leading here at home, 70 to 14. Seventy to fourteen, seven fifty-one to go here in the third. At the conclusion of today's football triple header, be sure to catch all today's highlights on the State Farm postgame report. We'll recap this game and all the other big contests around the Pac-12. That's the State Farm postgame report tonight. Following today's football coverage on the Pac-12 networks, Mike Yam, chairman of the board, along with the coach Rick Neuheisel, Curtis Conway, Jeremy Bloom, in studio, Dustin Haynes. Retains the reins as the leader of the offensive juggernaut that is the Oregon Ducks. Four shy of tying a pack, eight, ten, twelve conference record. I mean that record goes way back to olden days. Adam, when they were wearing leather helmets, <laughs> just a few years before yeah. I played college football, Kevin. The Anthony Thomas a moment ago. You saw that bright, brilliant smile of Thomas. Chip Kelly continues to keep the game face. All right, you're up 70 to 14. 7 11 to go in the fourth. What's he working on right now? Because you know him, he's always working, <laughs> right? Well, you know, he's not looking forward to next week. Yeah, it's 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 evaluation time right now. He wants to see his young guys. Hey, can they execute? Can his second, third team, can they execute? And you better believe these snaps are just as important to Chip as is the first team snaps. Haynes a keeper. And it brings up a fourth down and four, and Oregon will punt again. What is this, just the second time they have punted? The Oregon punter is kind of like the Maytag repairman. He's the loneliest man in the world. That is Jackson, <laughs> Rice, Jackson Rice, who is pretty good. Three years senior. 46-yard uh, average. Kenneth Crowley, the true freshman, back all by himself there for the Colorado Buffaloes. He's stationed down at his own 25. Jackson gets into that one. Bumped it. And a fair catch down at about the 28-yard line. We'll step aside with 6:05 left in the issue, and Oregon leading big. Pac-12 now also available for iPads and web browsers gives you 24-7 access to stream all Pac-12 Network's channels plus tons of exclusive video clips featuring your favorite school. Don't miss any of the action. Wherever you are, get the Pac-12 now for iPhone today. And the Buffaloes go to work and they keep it on the ground. Dante Abram with a keep and swarmed. 
550 left in the fourth. Adam, I was asking you before the break about the hypothetical, and we love to talk about hypotheticals. If Oregon were to play Alabama, what aspects of that game would you be most interested in seeing? I think I think that game has the sauciness factor. Saucy. The sauciness factor. Okay. Uh, let's go back a couple weeks ago. You know, Nick Saban talked about yeah. the Oregon attack, <laughs> and if that's really what we want to see, college football. If that's, <laughs> and obviously they play traditional pro style, the best defense in the country. Uh, offense, they're pretty efficient as well. But I think the different styles match up perfectly to see, hey, which one's the best? I'm still trying to interpret what Saban said, and I, I just can't make heads or tails of that. I mean, are you, you're testing the limits and the boundaries of human conditioning by playing at this kind of pace <laughs> at Oregon. I mean, I don't that's what the game was all about. Yeah, I look, I think, uh, you know, I you look at great coaches. I think everything that they say is a little calculated. Yeah. I think it was meant to ruffle a few feathers, pardon mm -hmm. the pun. But, uh, you know, they have a brand down there. They have great athletes that execute that defense. They does a great job of recruiting. And just it would be a lot of fun to see if Chip Kelly could finally, if they get to that position, win the big one. Hirschman with a nice pass, sideline out, but just too far out in front of his receiver. Yogi, get a piece of this action, will you? Uh, Nick Saban, <laughs> what? Adam brings up a good point. It's a calculated comment he puts out there publicly, but I, I, I'm not sure I'm interpreting it properly. Help yeah. me out. You played at this level. You coached at this level. What about it? Well, Adam's right. It definitely would be a saucy matchup if you saw those two go up against each other. I think that just the nature of the game is changing. You know, offenses are becoming more spread. You're seeing in the NFL right now, the New England Patriots are averaging 74 plays per game. The rest of the NFL is averaging about 64. Oregon looking for the record now. Set back in 1930. And it looked like they may have had it in their grasp on this return from Delaney. Yeah, Delaney nearly broke away with 4.54 remaining here in this fourth period of play. And the other thing, Yogi, that we sometimes we, we take for granted is these kids now, these kids today, listen to me, uh, everybody's playing spread at the high school level, right? They really are, and I, I think, you know, Chip Kelly talked to us yesterday about this, but if we got to see Alabama and Oregon, it'd be an epic matchup because you get to see this Oregon, you know, relatively undersized offensive line go up against a dominant D-line, NFL-type linebackers, and see how they would do at the point of attack in those situations, Adam, where it's a one-on-one -on -one tackle. And that is when Oregon has excelled. They've done it now through eight games this season. But next week against USC, they're going to get tested because the athletes SC has. Same thing when they go against Stanford's front seven. I'd love to see it against Alabama and settle that SEC argument. <laughs> Well, long way to go for Chip Kelly's Ducks. Three of their remaining four games on the road, as you'll be mentioned next week. Chip Kelly Terry at USC. Highlights, scores, updates after the game on the Dr. Pepper halftime report, or I should say post game report. Eventually, it'll be another halftime report because we've got all kinds of football today here on the Pac 12 networks. Game I'm interested in seeing is number seven, Oregon State in Seattle against Steve Sarkeesian's dogs there at Washington. Washington just got hammered last week going down to Arizona. And everybody's scratching their heads in Seattle this past week. And it seems the Huskies at a crossroads and backs against the wall. And how about Oregon State, best start in school history? Yep. And when you look at them in the last few games in the red zone they've scored in their last eight trips 84 percent exactly what Chip Kelly talked about exactly what John Embry talked about the best teams find a way to score when they get down into that red area well that was an explosion there defensively Salas came up and just packed a wallop came up and engulfed the ball carrier Bill Chimpaley. Watch Chimpaley. As soon as he got it, Solace met him at the threshold. Mm. That's square, baby. <laughs> Man, that's, that's, that's textbook, huh? That's uh, getting leverage, getting low. Solis at 6'3", 305 pounds. And the wrap. So many coaches talk <laughs> about the wrap, right? Not enough kids that wrap up when they tackle. That was done beautifully. Well, this is a mortar punt. 
And it sails into the air down at about the 15 yard line. I told you Jackson Rice was good. And he borders down. That went down about the 15 with flags fly. Here's Sean Hockley. Kick catch interference by the kicking team, number 39. 15 yards, first down. So it's against the Ducks. You know, the first time we had mentioned that uh, Colorado's not been here since 1984, but you go back to 1967, the Buffaloes actually opened Watson Stadium here in Eugene. Coach Jerry Fry, look at the staff that Fry had here at Oregon. Bruce Snyder, who you played for yep. at Arizona State. Mm -hmm. George Pullback. Seifert, great years with the San Francisco 49ers. And John Robinson in the lower left-hand side of that team photo. John Robinson in Oregon, of course, the great years at USC. Watson mm -hmm. Stadium, where under Chip Kelly, I mean, this has been a house of horrors. The Duck for opponents. The Ducks 35 and 4 coming in here at home, averaging just under 47 points at home again, uh, under Chip Kelly, now in his fourth year. Colorado goes back to work on the ground as the day is done for Christian Powell. Powell, 20 carries, 121 yards, two touchdowns. Very definitely the, the bright moment when carrying the football for Colorado's offense. And again, really the story for Colorado. They, they were overmatched in this game. Obviously, what Oregon is able to bring to the table, but they, they didn't give them a chance to get started early. The penalties really put yeah. them in a hole. Uh, they were shell-shocked a little bit with the speed of the Oregon Ducks on the offensive side of the ball. And from the opening whistle, really put themselves out of it because of the mistakes. John Embry coaching to the end, telling Josh Ford, hey, carry that ball close to the body. Ford, the junior, running back out of Denver, Colorado. Clock continues to run, 109 remaining in this one, and... The Broncos, or I should say the Buffaloes now with an opportunity here at the 43-yard line with a first and 10. Two wide to the right. One man in the backfield. That's Ford who's met, wrapped up, and finally hauled down. Oregon so quick to the football and they come in numbers. Guys always running to the ball. One reason that they uh, lead the conference in takeaways with 108 third in the country. And you spoke of Alabama. That's the other thing that Alabama really does well defensively. Take it away from you. Louisiana Tech 113. Alabama with 111 takeaways coming into this afternoon's college football action. And it's not just Oregon and Alabama, Kansas State, Florida, mm -hmm. Notre Dame. There's some great teams this year at this point in the season in college football. So a lot of great ball. We're just going to get into November. That's when the meat starts to get off of the bone. Yep. And we'll find out exactly how this thing shakes out. Still a lot of meat on that bone <laughs> as the Ducks wrap it up here to go 8-0, 5-0 in conference, 70-14 to the final. Here on homecoming from Hudson Stadium. Down to the field now, and Yogi Roth. Thanks, guys. Coach, congrats on the win. You got a phrase around here, win the day, and your focus throughout the season has been incredible. Now you're 8-0. How has your team played thus far in your family? They just understand the process, and they enjoy playing football. They enjoy practicing football. They enjoy playing. It's, it's a great group to coach. Now it's the game everybody's been talking about. USC, they beat you last year, 38-35. A lot of excitement. I know your approach isn't going to change, but what do you have to do to beat SC next week? You're going to watch film tomorrow. All right, Coach, well, good luck watching the film. Back up to you guys. <laughs> Can't wait to get to the film room, man. I know that's where you're going to be tomorrow. Have a great weekend, everybody. Barner, nine rushes, 104 yards, two touchdowns. Thomas, five carries, a TD, and a 73-yard punt return for a touchdown. 216 yards of total offense, 425 on the ground. Oregon 70, Colorado 14. Adam Archuleta, Yogi Roth, Kevin Calabro. We say so long and thanks for watching from Austin Stadium here in Eugene, Oregon. And now, let's check in with the Pac-12 Network Studios.